and my talk will actually be a, a bit of a departure from um, many of the talks in this session because I'm not dealing with in the animal facility, but more what happens to manure after it's out in the field. Um, I would uh, like to just acknowledge my co-authors, Carrie Lebowski and Todd Andrasky with the Soil Science Department uh, at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, just starting uh, with uh, the situation that is out there that led us to do this research. Um, as, uh, as everyone in this room knows, certainly ammonia losses can be quite high from surface applied manure. Um, and that reduces the manure inability or economic value, and it also contributes to environmental problems. Um, nitrous oxide um, is, of course, a potent greenhouse gas, and that can also be released. Um, injection or quick incorporation of, of manure has been shown certainly to be to reduce ammonia loss, but the, it's a little less clear what the effects are on N2O emissions. So we wanted to look at a number of um, field manure management variables and assess their effects on ammonia and the N2O losses, as well as the fertilizer value uh, for corn production. Uh, one of those uh, manure management um, aspects we wanted to look at was side dress manure. This is something that isn't real common in most places. Um, but um, so I want to just uh, note a couple things about this. Um, I was in Vermont for many years, and across the border in Quebec, there are actually a significant number of hog producers that did side dress manure into corn. Um, there's been some research done in Ontario that looked at as, as a quite a uh, quite an efficient app, a way to get supply corn uh, nitrogen to corn, and then we did a little bit of work with uh, some limited research and demonstration. So it seemed like it would be a reasonable thing to put into this mix uh, within our central Wisconsin situation. So our overall, our objective then was to look at the effect of liquid dairy manure application method and timing, as well as time of incorporation on ammonia losses, nitrous oxide emissions, and uh, corn yield and fertilizer end value. The, uh, we did this research at the Marshfield, Wisconsin Agricultural Research Station. It's a UW and ARS facility. Uh, the Withy Silt Loam, which we did, was a, is a predominant soil in the area, which is a uh, heavy dairy production area in Wisconsin. Um, and previous crop was corn in each of the years, and we used a new site each year, so we were not looking at residual from the previous year. Treatments, uh, we had several pre-plant treatments. Um, manure applied on the surface and then incorporated with the disc either essentially right away, we call it one hour, um, one day later, or three days later. And uh, for purposes of the ammonia mission, which we only did over three days, that was a surface application. And then we, the injection was with an S-Tyne um, uh, injector, Vibriflex um, injector, 15-inch spacing, uh, about four to six inches deep. Then we had side dress treatments at, at about the five to six uh, leaf stage of the corn. Again, injection with that same type of a, of a injector, except that it was 30 inch spacings and had shields because of the, to be able to inject between the rows of corn. And in, uh, in the, the last three years, we also included a surface application. There was also fertilizer nitrogen um, applied, um, zero to 200 pounds per acre. Uh, this is not evaluated for ammonia or n but it was used to evaluate the um, fertilizer equivalent value of the manure. Uh, just a, 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 sh a, a little shot of what, just to show you the placement of that manure um, in the, about in the, in the four to six inches deep, but a relatively narrow band uh, below the surface. Our manure source was, a, was liquid dairy manure. Uh, the target rate was 6,500 gallons per acre. Um, it did vary some. <laughs> um, solids content averaged 14 percent, which is um, on average a little higher than, than what you might typically see, but sand bedding. And our application rate of nitrogen uh, across the time period averaged just under 160 pounds of N per acre. As I said, it varied somewhat by the year and by the timing. Our ammonia emissions was measured using what we call what's referred to as the dynamic chamber or equilibrium concentration method. This was uh, developed in Sweden, has been used quite a lot in, the, uh, in, in Europe as well as in several studies in the, U in the US. Uh, where there are two chambers, um, two chambers uh, with, and, and an ambient meter, and in each one of those you have four of these passive diffusion samplers. 
We started measuring immediately after uh, manure was applied, uh, probably within a minute or two, if we can get out there. Um, and we had six measurement periods we, where we did uh, several different collections, starting with only one hour and then getting increasingly longer over the course of those three days. Nitrous oxide measurement, um, we use a static vented chamber using the uh, GraceNet protocol. And then this is the uh, original GraceNet uh, that, that describes um, some approaches using this method. Um, two chambers per plot we used. We, man we fabricated them from these utility pans that you can see there. Um, we sampled approximately weekly from May through October, more frequently right away after manure application, and it, if the weather conditions suggest that there might be conditions for denitrification. Three samples at a time over a period of 60 minutes. And this is just what it looked like in the pre-plant period where we had the, um, the two chambers and the um, ambient meter for ammonia, and then the, the nitrous oxide chambers. Uh, so those were out there for three days, then we removed them. Uh, it was chisel applied, and then we, we put the N2 chambers back for the rest of the season. Use a randomized complete block design, four replicates overall in the field, but just three for ammonia and N2O emission. Uh, we had relatively large plots uh, with space between so we could turn uh, the rig. Uh, just to summarize uh, the, the main results, starting with ammonia emission, uh, this is this is averaged over the three years of, of the study, and we have um, the the layout here is this is time hours after manure up, I was applied from zero onto the into the third day, and this is ammonia emission in pounds of N per acre per hour, so we're looking at rate of loss. Uh, starting with the this is the surface application. Here's the one hour incorporation. Here are the two injections. So pretty dramatic. Uh, difference and dramatic drop over the first after the first few hours. If we look at this on a cumulative basis, then we can see that we had uh, um, by, at the end of that time period, we are uh, something over 40 um, pounds per acre on the surface and substantially less in the other ones. Um, And to kind of uh, summarize that piece of it, most of that loss did occur in the first six to 12 hours. Uh, the heart, total three-day losses were highest for surface application, but were quite um, you know, reduced by the others. Um, this is not particularly um, new information, but um, it's, we wanted to be able to compare with the N2O emission during that particular time period. Um, so if we look at the N2O flux, um, this is a very different scale because we, have, we started in early mid-May and go all the way into October. Um, and uh, what we're seeing here is that this, the, the arrows represent the application times for pre-plant and um, side dress manure. And uh, as you look at that, there's a pretty much what stands out is this peak right here. That peak is the pre-plant injection treatment. Um, the red one is the pre-plant one hour. And then the green one down below is is the um, three-day. Um, so there, there, was a, there was an increase in all, in all cases after that pre-plant application, but quite a difference in the, in the extent of it. Not a whole lot of activity after the side dress. Uh, the next year, in case we thought we had things figured out, here's what we got this time. Um, uh, the dramatic difference uh, result really was, again, this, this, this time after side dress application, the injection treatment and uh, maybe a little bit um, of the surface application. Um, well, there isn't, it's pretty low levels in the beginning here, but, um, but if we kind of expand that scale, we can see that there was an increase in, in particularly the pre-plant, but then in the others as well. Um, we try to explain these differences by looking at soil temperature, moisture, and so on, which we monitored over the course of it. Um, and in some cases, we can, we, can, we can understand, in some cases, we can't. One obvious thing was that at this particular time, right after application, we got about a five-inch rain over the next 24 hours or so, which, of course, you know, we had pretty, uh, pretty wet conditions and uh, conducive to anaer anaerobic uh, for, uh, to denitrification. Um, if we look at the, 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 add that up over the course of that uh, season, or really that May to October part of the season, this is what we see for annual N2O loss over the course of that. 
in 2002 here, this is, uh, this is in pounds of nit nitrous oxide and per acre. Uh, there's our pre-plant injection, here's our other pre-plant, and these are the cydrus. Uh, in 2011, of course, the cydrus uh, injection is what stood out. Um, and I guess the, one of the striking things is this, the highest we got was about one pound per acre over the course of that. So this is a, this is a relatively small um, you know, amount in terms of, from the, in terms of the um, overall loss. So the, um, we did see then an increase in n flux after manure application at either pre-plant and or side rest time. Injection was most prominent, um, and there was a six to, day, to 12 to day lag time. Now, one, this is really very different from the way the ammonia acted because different treatment effects. We had the uh, injection, of course, total, very much reduced the ammonia emission, um, but there were increases in the case of the N2O. And uh, there's, there's some, like, certainly some explanations for that. One is that, of course, if you conserve the ammonia, you've got a lot more nitrogen than in, in the soil that could, something else can happen to. That's part of it. But we also had that concentrated band there. May have the, just the liquid itself might have created anaerobic conditions. We also have a carbon source with the manure and so on. So then that, that's probably part of the explanation. And then it's the lag time, you know, by, the six, to, by six to 12 days, the ammonia is already gone. So as opposed to this microbial activity that we see that creates the N2O emission. Um, we also had just very low levels of N2O um, as we got later into the season. Um, and as I said, the magnitude and timing varied quite a lot by year. Um, at least in some cases, we can explain that by the various conditions. In some places, maybe not, <laughs> at least right now. I want to just talk a little bit about the grain, uh, the yield response, shifting <laughs> to that aspect of things. Um, I, as I mentioned before, we had there were seven, six rates of nitrogen fertilizer applied, and this is just looking at the corn grain yield uh, response in the, each of the different years. So there, were, uh, there was an increase in all years. It averaged, on average, it was about 140 pound per acre um, optimum agronomic optimum rate. Um, and we really, what I want to use this for is to look at what was the, how did the manure effect, uh, what was the manure effect in terms of nitrogen value. So what we've used, we tried to, we calculated what we call N fertilizer equivalence value. So um, this blue line is the, an example, one of the, um, the, the yield response for one of the years of the, the grain yield here from fertilizer, so it, it had a linear increase up to around 100 pounds, and it was yielding about 190 bushels per acre. If we look at the, the, if, the, the if we had a yield of, say, 175 from, from the um, manure, that would be equivalent to 69 pounds of fertilizer nitrogen per acre. Um, and uh, we might typically, let's just say we had, a, for round numbers, 140 pounds of N in that manure, it means we got about a 50% equivalent of uh, the value of the manure compared to fertilizer. Um, if looking at that across the board and during this uh, experiment, it did vary by year depending on weather and soil conditions and so on. But in general, there was a trend related to the time of incorporation. Uh, injection, about 50% fertilizer and equivalent. Um, one hour or one day, about 37%, and then less as we went delayed the incorporation and had more loss, down to just over 30% for the surface. Um, so a summary of um, what we found here, highest ammonium loss from surface application, greatly reduced by both either injection or immediate incorporation. Most of that loss happened in the first few hours after application, which really emphasized that if there's going to be anything to do to manage it, it's got to be right away. You come in two or three days later, it's, it's kind of like the horses out of the barn or the cow, I guess, in this case. Um, fertilizer and equivalent varied, but was highest for injection, um, uh, less for delayed incorporation. So the injection of manure was most effective at re reducing ammonia loss, but it did increase N2O emissions, in some cases anyway. Now that N2O was much, much lower uh, emission amount than, than, the, than the ammonia, so as we, that it's not really economically that important in this case. There may be other cases where it is, but, um, but we, we have this environmental concern, of course. Um, but it needs to be balanced out because um, if you look at the, 
the ammonia that would be emitted if it, if it were not uh, injected or conserved, some portion of that is eventually going to end up back down in the ground. And the guideline that's used by uh, IPCC is 1%. So that really does go a ways to balancing out that, that difference in, in uh, N2O emission that you have. So that it may be less trade-off than it might appear initially. And, uh, and then there are alternatives in terms of to this s tine injection that we've used. I mean, tillage incorporation, of course, and conservation, tillage, and so forth. But you need to consider the residue management and other water quality concerns that might arise if, if, if uh, tillage is used. Um, and there are different injection techniques that um, uh, may do a, better, do a better job of mixing and, and, and different depths and so on. Um, we've actually started another study looking at comparing several different low disturbance uh, manure injection techniques. Yeah, so, and then the sidewalls thing, it, it does appear that you know, the sidewalls application does seem to be a viable way of getting, to get nitrogen supplied to the crop in this area. Um, and in fact, it had the highest fertilizer and equivalent value of all of the other methods. Um, it is another window of time to apply manure onto, onto a, corp, a crop. Um, um, there was actually a poster, I think, uh, in the, in, that was on this looking at applying manure into the growing crop, and then, so it's been used elsewhere as well. Um, it does allow use of a pre sidrus nitrate test to assess um, uh, the need for nitrogen. Of course, there's some practical limitations. I mean, you're driving this rig into the, into the, into the corn where there's corn growing. Um, so the, it, it doesn't mean you've got equipment you want to inject it. You've got equipment that's going to have to work in that kind of situation. There might be issues with equipment turning, plant damage, and so on. So it's, it's got to be worked out. Um, we also found that this data did support recent changes that have been made for the University of Wisconsin Extension manure availability recommendations. Just wanted to also thank here that, that this has sponsored the uh, funding sponsors for this research and to all the staff and uh, grad students who helped with this work. Yes. Yes, 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 that's right. I, I can't give you any quantitative uh, answer to that, but um, I mean, the only thing I, I, mean, I would say is that, that there is the other side of, uh, of conserving that ammonia so that, as I said before, that at least you don't have that amount returning back to the to soil. But no, I really can't answer that. <laughs>